So I've been making YouTube lessons for a while when it comes to guitar, since 2013 is when I did my first one, and I recently passed my 400th lesson. So I just wanted to take a quick moment in this one video and look back at my last 400 lessons and really talk about the zigs and the zags I took, you know? the phases I've gone through, the goals I had at different times. You know, whenever I happen to look at my older videos, I'm always like amazed at like, man, I, my, was, my life was in a totally different place or I had totally different goals or the song choices I was making were totally different. And I'm not saying it was bad back then. It's all, you know, that's the way things are. It's a winding road from time to time or all the time, really. When you're going through it, you don't feel that way necessarily. So no judgment here, I'm not judging my past self. I just want to, for reflection's sake, look back. So I'm on my YouTube page here. These are my most recent uh, videos. I've been doing about a video a week for the past five or six or seven years now, pretty religiously, like it's just part of my, my system. So let's go all the way to the bottom though. This is uh, where I started. So quick, th this first phase, these first 16 videos, right? Uh, these first four rows here. I did these in about a two month period back in 2013. And I remember this well, when I um, realized, oh, there was people making guitar lessons on YouTube. So the typical ones like Marty and Justin were the two I found. I just found it fascinating to be able to watch other people play, like pick any song, there'd be a video of someone playing that song and teaching it. So that was like really cool for me because um, I started looking up songs I knew. And in some cases I'm like, oh, I play it differently than they do. And, and it sort of made me realize out of the gate that Guitar, it, it's such a personal thing. There's no one right way to do things in all cases. So I kind of, at that time, got the itch, like very quickly. Like, oh, I should make videos showing how I play that song. You know what I'm saying? I was playing guitar anyway at the time. I'm learning songs anyway. And I figured, oh, this might be a nice uh, little project. I had no business goals at the time, but I remember I was like, hey, I'm gonna make a couple videos a week for about a month, put them out there and see what happens. Like just literally out of creative curiosity. Again, no business goals. I didn't even have ads on at the time. So I just made lessons on what I was into at the time. So this first one, this is my first video, Matilda by Alt-J, if I pull this one up. This is David Potts with Song Notes, and this is a lesson for Matilda by Alt-J. So that was the first one I did, and um, I'm not gonna play the video here, but it's funny that when I look back at these first, you know, this first phase of videos, I love how pure it was for like, I was into that Alt-J album. I love Dead Man's Bones, uh, this Pearl Jam or Eddie Vetti ukulele song, another Alt-J song, Lord, Johnny Cash. And then I went back to Redemption Song. That was one that I had known for like 10 years before at that point. But all the other ones up until then were songs I had just learned, you know? Maybe you walk the line, that's a different one. But um, I put these all out there. And um, it was it was interesting. They weren't getting that many hits. I don't know what the how many hits, maybe like 50 or 100 over a course of a few weeks each. But the what this all led to, the big one here, the big standout of this first phase was when I did this song for Frozen. And uh, the, the quick story was I took my daughter to see Frozen in the movie theater. We saw it opening night. And driving home, I was like, man, that, that music was really good. And I... At some point that weekend, I uh, looked up Let It Go on YouTube, and there was like no, there might have been one, but it was not a well done tutorial, or it wasn't a, you know, I, I, and I thought I should make a lesson for that song. I did, and I remember I was giving my younger daughter like a bottle in the middle of the night, and I checked my YouTube stats, and it already had like a few hundred views in a few hours, and I was like, whoa, and then it got to a few thousand the next day. So anyway, this one got to like half a million within a month or so, and that was the only real viral one at the time. Um, this Johnny Cash one, in years later, it took it you know took off as I did more Johnny Cash lessons. But anyway, it was fun to do these uh, these first couple. But then I stopped. Honestly, after this one, you'll notice there was a two year gap, and I had young kids and just you know I was I don't know you make it's a lot of work making videos. I took a break, but then I moved to Austin. I started playing ukulele again. There was a series of videos I actually uh, posted on my personal channel where. I was learning songs on ukulele, and when my daughter would take these long bats, I would just practice them and play them, and I started recording them, because I, I hate when you learn something and then you don't record it, and then you stop playing it, and then you f totally forget what you had, right? So that got me on the bug again. I made this first video, my return to song notes, and it started this next phase. And um, this next phase is defined by, I'm living in Austin now, I had just moved there, um, I'm recording in my garage in our house on, uh, yeah, I guess it was Stasny Avenue, um, South Austin. And um, I started doing lessons again, and I think I was pretty consistent about it because I knew enough about YouTube and stuff. You got to be consistent if you want to, you know, grow your channel. So I started doing songs, more Johnny Cash. I was kind of in the ukulele kick, as you see here, the, the Taylor Swift, the Buffett, the um, David Bowie. 
but learning Kodachrome finally, learning this song I loved, and, and kind of got into this new phase. I was messing with graphic design a little bit more. Um, I'm pretty sure I had, let's look at this one. I'm pretty sure I had like graphics in my videos. Yeah, so this was something that I didn't really do until I kind of had taken that step to Austin and, and everything. But then, um, you know, I get going. I still remember recording and editing some of these. Uh, this one, I remember it was right before Thanksgiving. Hotel California, this was actually my second big hit as far as YouTube videos go. This one, um, the short, the long story short is you can't view this if you're in the USA. And I don't know why. I think it's a copyright thing where there's some claim against it. And um, you, if you're, it, you, this will not show up on YouTube for you. So, but it still has... Um, is close to, it's one of my top like three or four videos. Um, if you're interested in learning it, you just go to my website and uh, search for Hotel California and you can watch it. It's just on my Facebook page, right? So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a solid lesson. I do have a song sheet for it. But anyway, that was my next phase. I was in my garage and um, kind of enjoying the classic rock. I think that, um, and I also was enjoying like being a bit more audience mind, a bit more mindful of what my audience might want to hear, you know? For example, these first few, um, nothing against Alt-J, but I was making some real personal deep cuts here that I was really into, you know? And I think I started to be more aware of like, let's get to some classics and everything. So um, 2016, that's when I got back to making YouTube video lessons again. I did a similar retrospective video there. So on we go into 2017. And what do I see here? Actually, this is, I think, the first video I made that was a non-song video. Um, and the thinking there is like, you know, you're making these song lessons and every song that has B minor or F, you're explaining how to play it and showing the alternate ways to play it and all that stuff. And uh, that's fine, but at some point it's like, I should make one video where I explain this really well and thoroughly. And then I can like give a short version and future lessons and point back to this one. So this was a first step in me um, venturing outside of, of song lessons. So let's see, La La Land came out. I love the music in that one. I started doing some, some covers here. So like Badlands by Bruce and, and City of Stars and Mrs. Robinson. This idea of like, hey, maybe sometimes I don't want to do a full lesson. I just want to do, I just want to play a song from beginning to end. That's still something that I, I do. I, it, it's very rare for me now to do a cover without the lesson. But I do do covers as part of all my recent lessons for the most part, with songs especially. It's just so satisfying, in my opinion, to work on a song you know, for a few days or a week or two and get it to a point where you're not totally sick of it yet, but you've kind of mastered it or you've gotten it as good as you can. And I just think it's cool to capture it, right? I mean, that's kind of why I make my videos. So anyway, um, Sweet Home Alabama did good. That's almost at a million. Um, looking, okay, more more of these non-song lessons, how to play A with one finger. So again, starting to get into some of these common things, right? More um, classic rock here. I had just learned this song. I was on American Idol back then. I had never, I had never known Simple Man until then. Poncho and Left Me, Lefty. So this is probably like, if I had to make a list of my favorite songs, especially in the past like five or 10 years, this is like up there, if not at the very top. I think I only learned of this song when I moved to Austin and I think it's like such a beautiful song. So get into some pop stuff here, Ed Sheeran, right? Don't say, okay, so don't say I should call this out. This was like my first um, of 2017 venture into pop music. And I'm chasing the views, really. I mean, that's that's ultimately, like, I was definitely, I, I only turned on AdSense, I'll say this, too, somewhere around 2015. The first, you know, 15, 20 videos, I didn't have at monetization turned on, but I turned it on. And once you turn it on, and you see how much money you're making, it wasn't that much. It was like a quarter a day. Then I got it to 50 cents a day. Um, and it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much, but it is still cool to see it go up. And then, you know, to realize like if you get, hey, if you get a hundred thousand or a million views, like that makes a lot more money for you relatively, you know, in, in all things considered. And so it made me think about just going after views and then pop songs seem like a way to do that. So Shape of You, I start to you know more the stay by this one. I remember learning this one. This was a fun one to learn, in my opinion. Bringing in some more classic rock, getting that Post Malone on. Okay, Miley Cyrus. Uh, so the, more pop. I'm going to my pop phase right now. Then I do Stairway to Heaven. That one's done pretty good. For, well, it's done pretty good. This is like my most requested uh, song sheet for sure. I, don't, I haven't made it yet. It's such a, I'll say this real quick, is like Stairway to Heaven is a song I've heard too many times. And it's such a huge hill to climb. 
to be totally honest, when it comes to making one of these things. I'll get to it eventually, but I have to feel inspired. There are so many other things I'm, that are more just enticing to me in the meantime, to be totally honest. Anyway, getting to more of these uh, uh, non-song lessons a little bit more, you know, so I'm mixing in pop stuff with um, some classic stuff. You know, Folsom Prison Blues. Sweet Creature by Harry Styles, is that? I, that's a fun one to play. Okay, so here we are. I moved houses. I can tell I'm in my apartment right here. Um, Julia Michaels, this... I'm in my pop world, guys. Some of these I, I defend. I think Despacito was fun to learn. Like, that was super fun at the time. This is a cool song, too. Um, going to back to some classics, though. But some of these, I honestly was just chasing theoretical views, and I never really got them. I mean, some of them did, but, like, this is... Of all the songs on my channel, this one, To You, I look at that and I'm like, I don't remember you at all. It's weird. It's it's really weird because I kind of have like relationships with all these songs. Some of them I just have zero opinion about. It's not that I dislike the songs. Um, I'm sure at one point I was into this song, but like, it's just funny. I don't know. But it got 82K views, but still, that's not what it's been about for me. Uh, this one, too, was... Um, yeah, anyway, y'all, doing some pop stuff. Pop pop phase, starting to flirt with some non-song lessons, mixing in some classic rock. And uh, let's see, let's just go through here. You can see the sort of, you know, mixing in, uh, you know, every 20% of the videos or so is non-song stuff. But I'm kind of steering away from the pop at this point, it looks like. So I think after, uh, let's see here. You know, maybe it was like To You and They Can't See were the kind of ones that maybe broke me and just made me feel like, and Demi Lovato, this one too, like, like th what is this doing for me? It's not doing that much. I remember doing this Charlie Puth one in the kitchen of my apartment. Um, but then I think I start got, getting back to the classics. Post Malone, I love learning this one. I'll, I'll defend this one for sure. But getting back to some more classics here, LA Freeway, like Guy Clark, that's what I'm talking about. Um, going to some Nirvana, some Tom Petty, Tyler Childers. This is such a fun song. So good. You know, I, I, I always like the Post Malone. I did go back to the pop well occasionally, getting back to some Havana. This was a fun one to play. Um, you know, I was so into this Camilla album at the time. I don't know. I guess I had to learn it. This one, I was honestly chasing, chasing views. Um, this was a fun one to play. I like doing movie songs, but still doing some classic stuff, you know, some movie stuff. Yeah, so, you know, I don't mind doing the pop stuff, but if, if I'm only doing it for the views, that's not as cool to me. It's like some of these some of these songs were um, fun to play. And I, I, if, I was, if it's in my head and my daughter's listening to it and it's I'm hearing it all the time anyway and I work it out, you know, I might as well make a lesson. That's kind of how I see it. Yeah, there was one comment I got around this point to be totally honest, where someone, I think it was on this video. Let's see if we can find it here. Someone said like, somebody said, this comment, I think right here, I guess I replied, but this one like stuck with me. And um, yeah, so he was talking about James Taylor Always picking beginner songs. Okay, well, thank you for the positivity, Florian. I hope you like my more recent stuff, for sure. But yeah, it's weird, because you get these comments from time to time. Some of the mean ones, or the, the, the ones like, that are critical like that, they stick with you. And, you know, I might get defensive, but, but like, I think about it, and um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I want to be listening to what people are saying. So anyway, kind of getting into some, some thumbnail design stuff here. This one's done really well for me, uh, John Denver. I think this is my most pop, current popular song. But I think around then I started steering out of my pop phase a little bit more. Um, this was a big song of me for college. This Nirvana one, mixing. You know, I, I like this. I like this thumbnail style I had. Getting rid of the artist. This artist thing was a little phase I was going through. But let's see here. Okay, so at this point I wanted to start making lessons on uh, stuff I was working on, and I think this is like something I keep coming back to. Is like I don't know everything as a guitarist, and the process of like capturing what you are practicing and the questions you're answering and you know i thought that might be fun to do so for example me learning drop detuning and like how to mess around i made a video on it and i'm glad i did that so i'm, I'm glad i started pulling on that thread and that was you know so rocky mountain high let me see what year rocky mountain high is so 160 so i'm, I'm not even halfway to 200 yet 
and I'm sort of um, starting to branch out a little bit more. I made this video talking about the notebook of songs I have. Watch this one if you haven't seen it because it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty much what I did for the equivalent of song notes back when I was in college. I would just make this notebook of printed out pieces of paper and everything, right? So more lessons on non-song stuff. And I actually admire myself for doing this because honestly I need to, songs are a lot of work. And I, I, I have a tendency to want to do the songs justice. But if I make every song less than a song lesson, that either means that I am gonna space them out too much or I'm gonna not practice enough to get things out weekly. And I think I need to supplement with some non-song stuff. So it's cool to see me doing this here. I really like the color scheme I had going on too even if no one else noticed it. Yellow was stuff that was like um, practice log stuff, what I'm working on. Um, green was like quick riffs and little warm up things. You know, things you could just grab your guitar and play. You don't have to worry about memorizing too much, right? Red was like technique stuff, right? Like how to play D add five or E major seven or something like that. Purple was, well, that was kind of reserved for covers and like just me performing a song. And then blue was song lessons. Um, so you kind of see me really using that style here. I like this too. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. My beard was really long back then. That's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> there's one of these videos. Oh, I think it's this one. Check out how long my beard is. I think it's my longest beard. Let's skip ahead a little bit. On how a particular song changes once you apply a capo. Yeah, so it, it's really funny. I'm a dude who's had long hair a few times and my beard has had various lengths. It's really funny having these videos as a log of like, um, you know, <laughs> my, my hair length and everything. Uh, Shallow did really well for me, uh, 2.5 million views. I think that was my first one to ever get a million. Yeah, I'm keeping up with this this um, color scheme here. I kind of abandoned it at some point. Backing track, my first backing track was Tennessee Whiskey. Um, I really like this mix. This is a good mix, a good um, mix of things. I need to maybe play attention to when this was and uh, keep that in mind. So I'm keeping it up. I, I really like this mix I have going on. So this is good. I'm giving myself a pat on the back. Man, I'm getting into the blues again kind of recently. I, I'm having the itch, and uh, this is one. This is a cool one. If you want to learn blues stuff, this is a cool lesson I did. I need to I need to, need to, to get going with this. But yeah, but here's one of me like just doing Plush by STP. And this wasn't a lesson. This was just a cover. I just did the first verse and chorus. But I'm glad I did that, you know? I think that's a cool song. And sometimes, from my point of view, it's nice to just... You're practicing something, just play it and maybe give a one or two minute explanation, but don't have to make it a 20 minute thing that takes me 10 hours to edit, right? Um, yeah, so this mix is keeping up, man. This is really cool. So uh, yeah, let me keep on scrolling here. Okay, so I'm noticing something. This is around California Dreamin'. Let's see what lesson that is. California Dreamin'. This is after Once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out. They make use of that song really well. So lesson 250. Okay, I had just moved into uh, that, that house. This is when I started messing with the iPad and handwritten stuff, which the last couple years has been a big part of what I make. I have it in my thumbnail here. Um, around this time, I started messing with, so for example, peace of mind. Let me pull up that PDF to show you what I'm talking about here. I started making chord sheets that were incorporating some hand-drawn stuff. So this one, I kind of typed up some of this, but then I also had these graphics, right? So you can kind of see. This was one of the first ones. So it's lesson 250 where that started. And if we go to look at like how I did California Dreaming, right? It's like, it's funny. I look back at like, I think this is cool. I, I applaud myself. I, I'm, I'm so glad I started doing this, basically. And my point of showing you this is that when I started, if, if you're into any kind of creative stuff, when you take your first steps, lots of times things are like, you don't have things figured out. You're kind of experimenting. So around lesson 250, it looks like, is when I started messing with the, the hand-drawn stuff. And what you're gonna see is that, uh, I guess I started it a little bit before that too. Let me go to my, my first one. Yeah, this is maybe the first one I did. This was lesson 234. I just, I mean, this is like screenshotted and written on top. This is nasty. But but it, it this is cool because this is how it starts. Like before that, everything looked like this. And this is cool too, I guess, but I started messing with the handwriting and it took, but I, I started doing it consistently. And around that time, um, I 
wound up getting to a place where things are a bit more consistent, right? Like this one, less than 260, 261, whatever. Um, and my point in showing you this is it, it's a process, a creative process, but I love this idea of system design and doing something that's going to scale, right? This is 268. And um, eventually what I did is I standardized my approach. And you're probably noticing, I mean, this is what things look like now. This is for, you know, this goes on musicnotes.com, which is a whole different story because they have their own formatting constraints I need to be mindful of, right? So anyway, that's a cool that's a cool little part right here. I like this mix, man. This is a good mix, mixing in the covers. Um, I think around here, hmm, let me think. wonder how my views are doing. Basically, there's some point around here where... I kind of like peek out on my views and I feel like since then um, I haven't had any like breakout videos in a long time. That's a different story. But I really like, I started doing the handwritten uh, titles here, right? Memories, Maroon 5. This is a pop song, I'll defend doing whatever. It was in my head for weeks and I learned it and I did it, you know. Um, but I, I started doing the handwritten thumbnails. I really like these because they, um, I feel like they there's a bit more character to them, you know? It's not just some font. It's like my literal handwriting. Let me know what you think, seriously. Um, right, you can see me. These, this one I don't think works so well. It, it's handwritten, but it's at the, you can't, it's not clear. There's too much stuff going on. I've always, I feel like I've sucked at thumbnails. If anything, yeah, yeah, you, you get the idea. I, I'm not good at the marketing stuff, the, the titles, the thumbnails. But yeah, get it, you know, I, I, I'm really fond of this phase as well. Um, I remember learning all these songs, um, more handwritten stuff, messing with handwriting in the thumbnail, you know, the cover. Uh, this is one of the few videos I recorded from the road. I was in Sedona, Arizona. And this song is awesome by uh, Houndsmouth, Houndmouth, Houndmouth, uh, Sedona. That whole album, Little Pink Limelight or whatever, it's so good. Saw them live right when I moved to Austin. Yeah, so messing up, um, messing with some more stuff here, you know, this one did really well for me. Um, experimenting, keeping going. And I feel like I'm getting kind of recently here, you know, past year. I'm messing it. I'm going through thumbnail phases as far as my visual style. I wanted to keep the handwriting, but maybe be a bit more um, edgy. Let me show you this. Punk Rock MBA YouTube. I like this guy's thumbnail design. It's a different aesthetic than I would have, for sure. But 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 I was kind of admittedly like I really like that guy's content, um, and uh, was experimenting with it here. But I kind of came back to the sort of diagonal thing, which is funny. I go through phases, you know, in and out, Blackbird. Um, yeah, this was in my current house, so it's, this is in the last year. Yeah, ten months ago. Now I'm in my office. You can see the the purple light behind me. I think it's back there now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, still messing with non-song stuff. I think recently, though, I made a few YouTube shorts. I think recently. So if we go the last four months, five months, let's see. Yeah, songs have been, I think, recent. Well, yeah, songs have been, the, you know, at least maybe almost 50%, if not more. But then I'm caught up, y'all. Now I'm here. And, um... You know, it's funny looking at it like that. You can also look at it like this if you can go to playsongnotes.com and just scroll. And then you also could, I mean, you could look at, these are all songs, so you could just look at just the song lessons. But anyway, it's just funny watching those sort of, the evolution I've taken with things. I think quick reactions is doing songs just for the hits and all that stuff that has like, I'm not really interested in that. I think I like doing songs or lessons for stuff that I, I'm really into and care about. I care about the music or the song or the technique. When it comes to me caring about hits, that's when things get dicey because then I'm like guessing and maybe going after songs I think other people will like, but then I don't feel that connection to the music or whatever. Now, if there is a song, whether it's an obscure old country song or a pop song or, or a certain technique thing or you know that I'm working on and I feel compelled to explain it, I'm more often than not going to do it because I, I feel like me just getting in touch with what I care about is going to be my best recipe for success. Now, separate from that, the marketing part of my brain needs to feel like, okay, right now I'm really into this blues thing, right? I'm rusty, but my point is, the creative part of me is like, hey, that's a video I want to make next. This is what's happening right now, literally, in my brain this week. 
And the marketing part of my brain is like, well, all right, how do we sell that? What do we call that? Is it a blues exercise? Is it like um, easy blues by yourself, add blues with these two notes? I'm like thinking about how, what do I call this in a way that will make you all open it up and look at it in a way that's honest. I have to be honest. Like for better or worse, I, you know, I don't want to be misleading and do clickbait stuff. So that's about the choice of lessons. I think the mix is important to me. Me doing epic songs. Now I'm, I'm very proud of all the songs I've done recently because I have like played the whole thing. All these, I mean, I'm pretty sure I did a playthrough on all these. And um, that feels more important than not to me, right? With, with songs especially, if I'm gonna do a full song lesson, write up the song sheet and everything, that's gotta be something I'm spending a week or two with because I wanna get into it, right? And I can't do that many songs in that world. That's a reality. And, but I also get all these amazing requests and suggestions from you all. And um, right now, this is one of the things I'm actively wrestling with is how do I uh, make lessons for some of the things you all are asking for in addition to my weekly or bi-weekly or whatever songs. Um, you know, if one of you all sends me a song that um, no one else has requested, but I really like the lick, can I turn that into a lesson somehow? How do I do that in a way that doesn't take 10 hours for me? Because like, I only have so many hours of to make lessons, right? So it's that constant battle of how do I mix things up, right? Some lessons short, some long, some I put a lot of work into, some not, but I wanna make sure I'm doing at least one really good song lesson every, you know, every couple weeks. Um, Got to fill in stuff. I will say, uh, for all of you who have watched this far, the goal of mine right now is to basically think about courses. And curriculum is a word that sounds a bit fancy, but if you look at my website right now, if you actually go to playsongnotes.com slash courses, it's not uh, public yet, or it's not like it's not on the navigation yet, but I am building out the literal front end. So I want to basically build an architecture where I can oh, here's, oh, yeah, I need to know the chords in each key, and I'm viewing it, and I can sort of go forward and back. Um, so I have this whole new design language, and it's, in, it's coded up. This is all live code, where I can basically put these structured courses together that are linear. It could be a four-course, a four-lesson course, or a 25-lesson course. And you jump into it wherever you want, and you can sort of cycle through. Um, and you can sort of go back to the course homepage. And this is, a, you know, these are kind of early, these are not finished fully baked designs. It's just the container stuff, right? Some pages are more done than others. But this is where I'm going because a lot of you have asked for it. And from a business point of view, um, I need to uh, embrace my original stuff more because um, I, it's, there's a higher ROI on that. The songs uh, with, you know, licensing through music notes and everything and, it's just not um, as lucrative as it was in the old days for me. So um, I will keep doing the song stuff because I love it. But I also want to make sure that I am giving you all what you're asking for. And if I make, you know, I had, I've made those lessons in the past of like, here's an individual chord or whatever, you know, how to play B flat or how to stretch your pinky or whatever. Um, those are great. But I, for a long time, for the last couple of years, I've lamented the fact that I don't have a container to put like a lot of videos into on a certain topic. And I finally do now with courses. So this is coming, um, August 1st is my goal to send this out to, uh, to start testing this. I wanna add membership to my site directly so you can log in, you can access the courses, you can view a lesson on a course, get the PDF just right there. That's like the vision I have. I'll, I'll support Patreon as well. Um, and give Patreon folks access to this. Um, but I'm more thinking about this experience where, you know, where things are going. So I look forward to being able to make lessons for songs in addition to filling out a lot of these course containers. These are just three of many, many courses I want to fill out. So that's going to be it for this one. I've talked a long time, but it's been fun. Um, I've had this topic on my head for a few months, and I will say going through it live, like seriously yielded some realizations that um, I had not ever gotten to. I haven't broken through to when thinking about it just at a high level. So thinking about, like I said, that mix of topics, my song choice, and uh, yeah. So anyway, here we go. Onward into the future with the next one. Hope you all are enjoying things. Go to playsongnotes.com. I just posted Southern Cross by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I worked hard on this one. I'm very proud of it. So I have a sort of free lesson here and I have an extended lesson. Um, it goes deeper into stuff with some tabs and slow playthroughs. Also I'll have a play along cover. 
Um, in the future, this stuff would probably possibly be members only. The free one would be here, but but as a way for me as a business owner to make sure I'm making, literally making enough to keep the lights on, thinking about ways to monetize things and give members access to stuff. But you can get the song sheet as well. Um, a lesson to a uh, link to all my other stuff. You all get the idea. But yeah, I just added this to the website as well, a way to go forward and back uh, between recent lessons. So it's kind of cool just to look going back a few weeks at a time and looking at stuff. So that's going to be it for this one, y'all. Everyone have a great uh, night, weekend, day, whenever you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.